Whether it's laughing at fail videos or relishing those times when a rival sports team lost the big game, we all enjoy watching others' misfortunes. There's actually a word for this. It's called schadenfreude. Literally, it means enjoyment obtained from troubles of others. It sounds twisted, and it is. It's even more twisted than you might think. Schadenfreude is nothing new. Chances are it's been hardwired into our way of thinking for millions of years. One of the strongest arguments to my mind is that our brains evolved for you know, millions of years in a situation where you had small groups of humans scrabbling out an existence against other small groups of humans in a relatively harsh environment. In order to survive that, you'd need your group to be really tight knit. Um, and this would both select for something like empathy, feeling for the suffering of other group members, and also extreme aggression towards others, something like schadenfreude. Schadenfreude and empathy are two sides of the same coin. They're both a response we feel to seeing someone else's trials and misfortunes. However, there's one big difference between the two. Schadenfreude isn't something parents teach their children, yet researchers know that babies as young as two can experience it. All it takes is a little competition to trigger the reaction. For one study, two-year-olds watched as their mothers doted on other infants. Later, the mothers were told to spill water on the infants. When they did, the onlooking two-year-olds got so excited that some of them literally bounced with joy. It's funny, but it's not hard to see how this childish rivalry could develop into something more sinister in adults. And that's exactly what Emile Bruneau studies. He's traveled to many parts of the world to investigate conflicts, including Americans and Mexicans on the Arizona border, Israelis and Palestinians in Israel, and Democrats and Republicans in the US. Doesn't matter where the conflict is or what it's about, he's found that the root of all of it is schadenfreude. We are uh, extraordinarily motivated by who belongs to our group and who belongs to the other group. We have a strong tendency to think not just in terms of me and you, but in terms of us and them. And people who identify as them, I'll feel more schadenfreude towards them than towards us. And certainly that is the type of thing that drives behavior. If you feel empathy for somebody else, you're motivated to help them if they're in distress. Similarly, if you feel schadenfreude, you're motivated to, uh, to harm the other person. Neuroscientists think they've pinpointed the area of the brain behind all this. For one study, Red Sox and Yankees fans watched simulated plays while a fMRI measured their brain activity. When a fan saw the rival team fail, a special area of the brain called the ventral striatum lit up. It helps process reward and pleasure, suggesting that the fans were experiencing schadenfreude. The ventral striatum is also involved with decision making. Interestingly, fans who showed more activity there also reported that they were likely to harm a fan of the rival team. This could explain why schadenfreude seems to be driving human conflicts and violence worldwide. But isn't it time we finally shake off this archaic way of thinking? The modern world is very different than the world that our brains uh, primarily evolved in. And that right now we're trying to solve these modern day problems with Stone Age psychology in an environment that is uh, that is global and multicultural, where you have much less conflict, where cooperation and collaboration can get you much further than conflict, then yes, I feel like um, it, is, it is not as productive. Instead, Bruneau is exploring how to use empathy to resolve conflict and move towards resolutions. Most recently, what I've been really interested in is how do we intervene and how do we um, motivate empathy towards the other group. Interestingly enough, what I found is that interventions that are directed more at trying to challenge their kind of cognitive perceptions of the other side are the types of things that open up their empathy. So it's it's almost like the best approach to opening people's hearts is first by opening their minds. This doesn't necessarily mean that you can't laugh at fail videos on YouTube. But perhaps if we tried to have a little bit more empathy for other groups, maybe we could make the world a better place.